Who were some of the dumbest criminals out there who were just begging to get caught? Olsi Behaluli posted the money he made from dealing on Twitter. And Lorraine Graves actually commented on her own most wanted Facebook post made by police. <laughs> Let's get right into it. Number 4. Model Citizen Olsi Behaluli used his above-average looks to garner meager fame on TV, then dashed it all with a photo showing him surrounded by some 240,000 pounds in drug money. The man claimed he had previously appeared on dating show My Little Princess, featured on Channel 4. With the show's IMDb page barren and clips all but scrubbed from the web, that claim is difficult to verify. In any case, details about his life aside from that are fairly sparse. For those who aren't privy to the 2013 flash-in-the-pan phenomenon that was My Little Princess, it was a dating show conducted in about the most over-the-top manner possible. The ridiculousness included challenges like guessing the princess's favorite conspiracy theory and singing karaoke to her during her first meeting. Knights or contestants who didn't get into the princess's good graces were tossed into a moat by a giant in armor. <laughs> no, seriously. Behaluli didn't become a prince after the show. Instead, he fell in with a drug-running gang and then royally blew it, getting himself jailed in one of the dumbest ways possible. But you don't need to start dealing like Olsi here to have a luxurious lifestyle. Bespoke Post, our sponsor for today's video, will add luxury to your life without costing you millions. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club with a touch of class. Most of Bespoke Post's products are made by small, independent businesses, many of which are based right here in the U.S. From home decor to stylish accessories and drinks, you'll never have to shop online again. The best part is, you decide exactly which boxes they send, which are catered to you based on a short questionnaire you fill out. You only pay for what you want. You'll get a box assigned to you each month based on the quiz you take when signing up. Before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what comes inside to decide if you'd like to keep it, swap it for a different box or offer, or skip the month entirely for absolutely no charge. You only pay for what you want. Plus, the box lineup changes every month. Whatever your lifestyle, they've got something for you. Pick the nightcap box, for example, and you'll get a pair of laser-etched crystal whiskey glasses, minimalist leather coasters, diffuser bottle of amber and oak moss scented oils, and even a book of crossword puzzles to wind your night down with. Or for you busy work bees out there like us here at Pablito's Way, the concentrate box includes a cold brew iced coffee maker, a stylish desk set made of brushed concrete, and a bottle of artisan bitters to add a dash of floral notes to your morning brew. Each bespoke post box is worth around $70, but as viewers of our channel, you only pay a fraction of the price. To get 20% off your first box, click the link in the description and enter code PABLITO20 at checkout. Or go to bespokepost.com forward slash PABLITO20. Let's get back to Behaluli. He even took associates Basim Topali and Azim Prashka with him. Members of one of the many notorious gangs that have a stranglehold on England's illegal drug market to this day, the three were all part of the same operation, which made it possible for a Behaluli's mistake to blow the whole thing apart. If you're raking in lots of cash, you may be tempted to flaunt it. For people like internet influencers and celebrities whose continued raking in depends on showing off the cash they've already got, that makes sense. For a model and drug dealer, <laughs> yeah, not so much. Behaluli apparently didn't get the memo. The dude posted a photo to Instagram surrounded by mountains of cash. You don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to guess what happened next. The cops arrested Behaluli himself first. He tried to cover for his gang, saying that the photo in question was taken in Albania with a relative's money. London's finest didn't buy it. They raided the gang's stash house and arrested two other members. Police ultimately broke up the whole operation, which amounted to some four million pounds between cocaine and heroin. Behaluli is just one of many criminals flexing their wealth online where their actions have backfired.
Even so, the judge didn't go easy on the group of thugs. The former dating show star caught an 11-year sentence out of a total of 31 years between him and his two goons. Topali and Prashka, once they've served their 10-year sentences, will be headed back to Albania. Wealth signaling has been a prominent gang activity around the world, but in the UK, it's picked up a special significance in the past few years. Notable Albanian gangs, such as the Helbanians, have been going as far as producing music videos. The goal seems to be attracting more young men from their homeland to join in and tighten the gang's stranglehold on UK criminal enterprises. That practice may be a bit more restrained in the future, since these arrests have made it clear that authorities are watching out. Behaluli's personal Twitter account has been been active recently and seems to indicate that all is well with his life as a model. Given the implied but unproven gang ties, there's no way to know at this point if he's going to reoffend. Albanian gang culture seems to run on loyalty and vengeance, but on the surface at least, it appears that the star of this story has reformed. Number 3. Brotherly Dumb David Guerrera, 17, and Ezra Guerrera, 21 recently caught charges in Texas thanks to Instagram posts by David showing off the pair's guns and cash. Life can be tough for young brothers living together without a parent, but these two didn't make things any easier for themselves by falling into the wrong career track. The pair had been living together in the south side of San Antonio in the lead-up to the arrests. Alerted to the social media postings, the Bexar County Sheriff's Office moved on David first. They found him in traffic, and during the stop, they discovered a loaded gun, hash oil, and and cash in the car. David was detained on the spot, along with his older brother, who was riding shotgun. A search of the pair's home yielded more weapons, marijuana, cocaine, and $15,000 in cash. The pair were booked immediately. Texas law, strictly speaking, still criminalizes marijuana in all its forms. The only statewide exception is non-smokable hemp, with a few caveats. Even so, many products with an extremely low or negligible concentration of THC are allowed. Additionally, many police departments and even entire cities and counties are simply refusing to prosecute for small amounts that could conceivably be for personal use. That didn't do the brothers much good. Along with weapons and traffic charges, both brothers got controlled substance charges for the cocaine. The marijuana, meanwhile, was found to be in excess of the four-ounce legal limit for a misdemeanor charge in Texas. This makes it an automatic felony and made the cops throw the book at the duo that much harder. As of this writing, the case seems to be ongoing. We'll have to wait and see what the criminal justice system does with these two wannabe hard cases. Number 2. Comment Section Lorraine Graves must have felt like a real celebrity when she commented on a public entity's Facebook post that was talking about her back in July of 2021. The hang-up? The post named her as an accessory to murder, and the comment got her arrested. The shooting happened in March, and the original post from the Tulsa, Oklahoma police went up on a Wednesday. The very next day, Graves was arrested. The details of the crime aren't easily available as of this writing, but sources say that the unfortunate person, Eric Graves, was shot and his body found inside an apartment. Whether it was his own wasn't laid out. Another victim was also injured. The two perpetrators, Jaden and Gabriel Hobson, were actually brought in first, leaving police on the hunt for Graves. She wound up on the very top of the city's most wanted list. That's not the kind of fame you want to embrace. But Graves' comment asking about reward money lightened the mood considerably in light of how serious the crime was. Police couldn't help but rag on Graves after she outed herself. In a more open and shut case, there would definitely be room for such gloating. This one, well, things got a bit more complicated. Not long after Lorraine Graves shot off her mouth, then mugged for the camera in handcuffs, there was a major break in the case that completely revamped authority's suspect list. A man previously thought of as only a witness, Wendell Alexander, now faces first-degree murder charges alongside Jaden Hobson. Evidence indicates two shooters, and new details have brought to light that Jaden and Wendell were the likely trigger pullers. Lorraine's original charges of accessory to murder weren't modified all that much. After her cousin was gone, she was thought to have helped hide the guns used in the crime and protect the criminals. Gabrielle Hobson, meanwhile, is alleged to have helped hide evidence, including the corpse, and taken items of value from the victim after death. This complicated case is still in the air as of the latest update from our local sources, which dropped in September of 2021. Number 1. 24-Hour Health 
Francis Noble of Hertfordshire, England, was in need of 24-hour care. Due to a neurological condition, she was no longer able to feed herself, take care of household obligations, head out in public, or do any of the numerous other things that most of us take for granted. The poor woman was bedridden and needed carers on staff around the clock to ensure that her needs were met. Her condition put her into a bedridden state as far back as 2005, and she petitioned her local government for help in getting the care she needed. A common practice seen in the UK and abroad is to give the sick person a fixed stipend to pay out to carers of their choice. Hertfordshire County Council was glad to take care of one of their own, and over the course of more than 11 years, they paid out over £702,000. Here's the thing, though. It was all one big lie. The whole thing fell apart when authorities opened up an investigation in 2018. Noble admitted as much and said that starting in 2007, she was receiving money that she didn't actually need. She also admitted that herself, her daughter, and her son-in-law were living high on the hog with that money. The £702,000 and some change paid out since 2005 wasn't the amount that charges for the trio ended up being based on. Instead, the amount paid since 2007 was the basis for the charges coming up close to £625,000. The scam was a fairly elaborate one. The scam in its original form was fairly simple. Noble got money from the council to hire carers, and she didn't spend all of it on the intended care. She kept some of the cash for herself and hired her own daughter, Laura Borrell, who was paid a decent amount. Borrell's husband, Philip, was also in on the whole thing. Using their part of the ill-gotten gains, the younger couple took off on a number of vacations. They went to places like San Francisco, Canada, and Boston. The pair even benefited from a GoFundMe set up in 2017 by Noble to help them with a big vacation. The story behind that one only makes things juicier. In 2017, the Boros went on ITV's This Morning. Laura, then 39, claimed that she was one of the youngest frontal temporal dementia patients on record. The pair regaled audiences with the struggles caused by the disorder, including Laura having to stop pursuing a career in law. Noble's GoFundMe page reportedly raised around 1,500 pounds towards a grand trip to help Laura make memories before her memory was affected by the disease. With the details of the case being being as they are, the Boros' claim to a neurological condition may seem dubious. According to Laura's attorney, the claim was legitimate. The first real signs of trouble came in 2015, when neighbors began to notice Noble being a lot more active than she logically should have been, given her condition. Notably, she was reported seeing out walking her dog, meaning she had to keep up with the animal. In one encounter, she was said to have spotted a neighbor spying on her walking the grounds around her home, then pulled her hood on and claimed to be a carer, not Noble herself. Another neighbor said that Noble was seen taking a home delivery of groceries. The reports coming in from neighbors included video evidence. Authorities simply couldn't ignore the situation any longer and launched their own investigation. They began observing Noble's residence, and what they found sealed the deal. Not only was Noble up and about when she was claiming to be bedridden, but there were no indications of any visits by care staff. Naturally, authorities pounced. Police nabbed the Borals in short order, but Noble gave them the slip. When the heat was officially on, Noble decided to lay low in Berlin. Specifically, she settled in Rohrwalele, a somewhat affluent suburb not far from Berlin's limits in 2019. Even so, St. Albans Crown Court managed to have proper hearings about the matter. One hearing happened with Noble present to admit to fraud by false representation, and another happened without her. In the end, all three fraudsters were sentenced. The three admitted to a limited number of counts that don't quite add up to the grand sum involved in the whole scheme. What they did decide to admit to in court was enough to earn them all some serious jail time. The Borals came together to admit to a joint charge of receiving criminal property, about £184,000 in all. The two got their own individual charges as well. Laura confessed to receiving criminal property in the amount of £39,700. Philip pulled down a significantly lower amount, admitting to only £6,218. Noble, meanwhile, admitted to one count of fraud and one count of transferring criminal property for £130,649. Noble, being the ringleader in the whole affair, was sentenced to four years and nine months in jail. As of this writing, she's awaiting extradition from Germany to serve her sentence in England. Laura Burrell, the daughter, got three years and nine months. 
Philip Burrell, the son-in-law, was sentenced to four years and three months. Click to watch one of these next videos and let us know in the comments section who you think the dumbest scammer is on this list.